Welcome to Lamar's Cards and Horrors, the best store for all your gaming and haunting needs. I'm Matthew, and today I'm going to be talking about how Commander being the most popular format has created issues for creature design. I'm going to be discussing the primary role of creatures and how they fail that role in EDH, why current designs are the way they are and how they've warped our evaluations, and the future issues that could arise if this isn't addressed. Creatures and magic have had a long and wild history. Back in the day, creatures were pretty awful all around, very poor mana investment for your stats, often with some kind of downside also built in. Magic was much more focused on the idea of dueling wizards, winning with lightning bolts and counter spells. But eventually, the designers realized people really liked summoning monsters to fight for them, and over time, creatures became the big threats they are today. Generally speaking, a creature serves as a way for players to invest resources into long-term threats toward their opponent's life total. Creatures represent a clock on the game. The more damage you're holding up, the quicker you can potentially end that game. In formats like Modern, creatures like Murktide Region and Dragon's Rage Channel represent some high stat output for cost while giving you extra value. Cards like Death's Shadow and Tarmogoyf have been vanilla beaters that represent stats that exist purely as ways to develop damage quickly. Depending on the format, what this type of card looks like may differ, but this type of card virtually doesn't exist in one key format. In Commander, where each of your three opponents have 40 health, it is much more difficult to find creatures, especially at lower mana values, that apply any sort of meaningful pressure. We have a few notable exceptions, like Sarah Ascendant and Ishai Ojutai Dragonspeaker, but more often than not, most creatures in Commander are played for abilities they have that happen to be on a body. You could argue cards like Craterhoof Behemoth can fit this role, but from this traditional definition of developing stats for future damage, this clearly doesn't apply. So why is this key aspect of magic missing from its most popular format? That's because we're being held back by the past. Like it or not, Commander is magic now. It's by far the most popular format and easily one of the biggest reasons paper sales are still as high as they are. Let's face it, people aren't out here pre-ordering Dominaria United to get a jump start on building for their next standard tournament. They're looking to grab the shiny new commanders and flashy new art treatments for their favorite EDH decks. I'd argue since about call time, every set has been a commander set first and foremost. But of course, that's all very unofficial. Officially, these are standard sets, a format that's been dying since roughly 2019 with Throne of Eldraine, but that Wizards of the Coast is still making cards for. Why? I honestly don't know. But currently, cards are still designed jointly around the very low power standard and high power eternal format of Commander. We touched on before how creatures are developed to push future damage and how their stat lines need to meet a certain threshold to effectively do this. The problem that comes from 30 years of standard being the standard is that most magic creatures are still designed for 1v1 20 life formats, even though most of us are actually playing 40 player free for alls at 40 starting life. For a long time this has been fine as most formats align close enough with how standard operates to create different feeling environments that are still mostly functional, but if you're having to design a creature that it's powerful in both standard and commander, issues can easily come up. A 1 mana 4-4 with upside would likely warp almost any 60 card magic format it's legal in. And most of us are conditioned to know this. We see this potential card and immediately feel like it must be broken. But scaling up to commander, statistically this card is worse than a 1 mana 1-1 one one is in standard. A 1 mana 1-1 one one is a 20 turn clock in standard, but a 4-4 would take 30 turns to burn through your opponent's 120 total health. And that means a total of 90 turns combined from your opponents versus the 1-1 one one giving your opponent only 20 turns to answer. The stats we're used to seeing as on rate can't really apply to Commander with the same meaning that it should in other formats, but because it's all we've known, we're conditioned to think this way. A recent example of the disconnect was when Wilson Refined Grizzly was revealed. So many people were talking about how broken he is by being a 2-2 two -two for 2 with so many keywords, but in reality, he does almost nothing useful by himself and has abysmal stats for actually applying pressure and winning through combat. Now you may be thinking that what I'm saying can't really make sense because the new creatures are some of the most powerful in Commander, and you're absolutely right. But that's because so far Magic's solution to this issue has been in the shape of complexity and value creep. Modern card design, fire design, whatever you want to call it, has been a major shift in what we get out of a creature when we play it. Today's best creatures function more like sorceries attached to a body. They ensure you receive value out of them when you play them, 
probably in an effort to make sure everyone has fun and that removal spells are worthless. Let's learn more about that in this video here. A card like Omnath Locus of Creation, for example, is still just an on rate 4 mana 4 4 looking at the numbers. But of course, it also has a young adult novel amount of text on it, ensuring you immediately get value out of it and get all kinds of other wild effects. This, in my mind, originally was a way to make creatures exciting, but also to ensure new cards were seeing play in formats like Modern and Legacy by having ubiquitously powerful effects. And that is carried over to Commander largely as well. But now that Commander is a format of choice, I would actually claim that this type of design isn't sustainable as it's pushing what is already a fast combo format into being faster at doing that. When your creatures are being played to get payoffs and combos from them and they have pointlessly small bodies for the goal of combat win, you are actually making truly creature based strategies less powerful. Somewhat controversially, I think making creatures more powerful stat wise and with less combo and value potential, we would actually see the game slow down as combat becomes more and more of a viable way to win the game and not just kill one player and then lose. Cards like Doss's Oracle, Dockside Extortionist, and Ragavan are all these types of heavy value cards that have shifted the format dramatically, and each of them are shifting it towards a style of play that is already powerful. I believe leaning into designing for Commander and not hiding behind standard sets, making creatures meaningfully powerful as threats towards opponents' life totals, and slowing down the current complexity creep may be critical towards a more sustainable Commander. Probably the easiest way to actually turn all of those years of cards past and future into more useful game pieces is to make Commander more in line with Standard in the simplest way possible, a lower life total. Lowering the life total to 30 for instance turns that total life pool you need to beat down from 120 to a much more manageable 90 and could really help combat be a viable strategy going forward. Whichever way Wizards decides to go forward with, I think what's important is going in this new direction. Dealing with the long-term implications of a world where this 30-year-old game is being played in a way it was never designed for may take a while, but I think the very talented people at Wizards of the Coast and the Rules Committee are up for the challenge. If you have your own ideas as to how to better make future designs work for Commander, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more videos like this and consider supporting me on Patreon so I can make even more videos for you and make them even better. Thank you so much for watching and live, laugh, love. <laughs> That's not going to be the end of it. I'm probably cutting that.